Thanks for coming to sammallory.com. Today I'm testing out the new Sennheiser MKH8060 shotgun microphone. I have the 8060 on a C stand. The output is plugged into a Sound Devices 302 mixer. The main outputs of the mixer are tamped down to mic level and I have them plugged directly into a Panasonic GH2 HDSLR camera. This is the sound you get with the MKH 8060 going all the way down to a sub mini microphone input on this camera. And as you can hear, the sound maintains quite well and sounds very nice. Um, one thing that I've noticed about this microphone that I like is, you know, right now I'm in the ideal spot under the shotgun, but if I move over this way a little bit, the audio maintains its quality pretty well and I'm off access, but as you can hear, I don't get tinny sounding and I don't sound, you know, off access. And as I move back to directly under the microphone, I sound complete again, but if I go this way a little bit, you know, it's, it's forgiving. Uh, I still sound pretty good. Obviously, if I turn my head this way and get too far off access, you start hearing the boominess of the room, um, but you know, any shotgun microphone would do that. Uh, the 8060 is a part of Sennheiser's 8000 series. This is a modular system. I could actually unscrew the capsule here and screw on one of the other 8000 series capsules. They make the 8070, which is a longer shotgun microphone, which you can use for recording nature and for sports. They make the 8050, which is a hypercardioid capsule, which would be perfect for doing interior boom pole work. You can get into, you know, making podium mounts for live events and doing different kinds of installs. Um, you can also swap out the uh, module that the capsule is screwed onto. Right now I have the capsule screwed onto the MZX800 which comes with the microphone when you buy a complete 8060 shotgun. And the MZX800 is just a regular analog XLR output. If you want to plug into a digital device, such as the Sound Devices 788T or the new Zaxcom Nomad, um, you can buy the MZD800 output module and that will connect to those devices and send an AES-42 digital uh, signal, which is pretty cool. The microphone ships with a plastic transport container, which kind of looks like a, kind of looks like a cigar case, um, but it's actually a really cool thing. Um, this is very lightweight and it's tough. It's gonna protect the microphone as you travel to and fro. You also get a foam windscreen, of course. This actually feels like it may be useful in some gentle outdoor conditions. And definitely if you're swinging the boom indoors, this will do the trick. And you get a regular non-shock mounted mount for the microphone. Right now I am using the 8060 with a K-Tech KMTS shock mount. The KMTS is a good match for this microphone because the KMTS has a shorter sort of middle. Um, a lot of shock mounts are going to be a bit wider, but the KMTS is narrower and it really works well with this microphone. Why don't I go ahead and turn the boom off axis a little bit, spin it away from me. So this is what the boom sounds like when it's not pointed at me. Obviously not nearly as good. I'll go ahead and point it for, at the ceiling for no reason. Now I am on the other side of the mic and I'm kind of speaking into its rear lobe. As I get closer to the lobe, it sounds odd, but that's what it sounds like. Coming back this way. Now I'm a bit off axis. It's pointing at the wall behind me and here I come. Back to the perfect spot. Check one, two, there we go. Thanks for checking this out on sammallory.com. We'll see you again soon. This microphone is actually used in the great on-camera microphone shootout 2011, where I pit it up against some on-camera shotgun microphones. Um, this is the one XLR microphone that's used in the shootout. So if you wanna check that out, check out sammallory.com. 
Thanks a lot, and we'll see you soon.